what's the evacuation? Evacuation? Oh, you're gonna, is this being filmed? Yeah. Okay, good, that's good. So this is, this is actually good to use in the evacuation video. Okay. All right, so evacuation, I like it when Robbie asks questions because he comes from that perspective of like, he doesn't know anything. I say he wouldn't know anything, but. Not about air conditioners. True. So evacuation is pulling the inside of the air conditioning refrigeration circuit into a vacuum. When you pull something down into a vacuum, what do you think happens? Uh, you don't know? No guess. No, no guesses? Okay, so what, what do you think happens to water if you pull it down into a vacuum? It boils? It boils at a lower temperature than normal. Right. So if you think of it, if you think of it it's just simply you're, you're by removing, you're, you're, you're basically overcoming atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSIA on a right. tank. And so when you pull something into a vacuum, you're not really going, you're not really going into a vacuum. All that you're doing is just removing the atmosphere. That's a way of saying it. Like, so the atmosphere, that's actually a way Jim Bergman always says it. You're actually removing the atmosphere. Atmosphere is 14.7 PSIA. You're dropping down below 14.7 PSIA. We can't achieve a perfect vacuum, which we measure vacuum in microns, because that's a very, very fine, fine measurement of, uh, of pressure. You can't pull anything down to zero, but we try to get the system down to we can, 250, 300 microns in general. Um, we definitely want to get below 500 and we want to see it sit and, and stay below 500 for a period of time. Uh, or, you know, different manufacturers will say different things. But in general, I like to pull it below 500 and then let it stand in a standing pressure test for five to 10 minutes and make sure that it doesn't rise above 500, which is an indication that you don't have moisture because if there was moisture, the vapor pressure would overcome, you know, it would boil and then it would increase that pressure. And it also shows you that you don't have leaks. So you're getting air out of the system that contains moisture and other crap that you don't want in there, and you're also getting uh, a water vapor or water that's in the system out. Liquid water can't be sucked out, it has to be boiled out, and that's how you do that. 154.3 on the suction is what I'm primarily going to watch. There'll be a little bit of equalization and fluctuation with temperature, but it should be should stay right in that zone. So we're going to let that hold for a while, a standing pressure test, bubble test the, the actual threaded connections and see what we get. So this is a core removal tool, otherwise known as a CRT. It's a couple decent brands, but I tend to use this particular uh, Appian brand. So on a core remover tool, you you can only pull this out and push it in with this valve in the open position. When this valve is closed, it's shut off so that it can't come all the way through, but neither can the refrigerant come all the way through. So if you're removing a core, place this in here, tighten it down with it shut off to the refrigerant so it doesn't leak, then open it and push it in, unscrew the core, and then remove the core. Then shut it off then remove this, and now when you open this, now it's completely unrestricted into the system. So this is where you connect your evacuation hose. And if you're using a micron gauge on the core remover tool, which is what we recommend, you connect it to the side port with the Schrader. So micron gauge here, vacuum gauge here, vacuum hose going to the vacuum pump here with the core removed. And that's what we're gonna do now. So we've been holding now at 154 for 20, 25 minutes or so. We're ready to go ahead and pull our vacuum. So I gotta attach the core remover tools on both sides, attach our great big hoses, vacuum rated hoses, micron gauge, um, but I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that all now. All right, quick pause here. So we do not pull the vacuum through the gauges. Even though these are a great set of gauges, all manifolds have some restriction in them and we don't want to add that restriction to our vacuum. So our vacuum is, we're not going to remove the gauges, we're going to keep them here because we need them for when we're ready to set the charge. But
other part was just to pretend. So you can already see, we've already, we've already, this thing is coming down so fast. It's been like a few seconds. See, it's showing the saturation temperature of water at, that, at this point, so water would boil at minus 13 degrees right now at this pressure. I have it set at a 300 micron target, and then once we get to 300 microns, we're gonna valve it off at the core tools and do a decay test. So let's go through now while it's doing this and just show the configuration. We've got two big hoses, a T. This is a 3 8 connector down to a half inch connector on the pump, two three eighths connectors, down quarter inch at the core tool, a quarter inch connector at the core tool. These are half inch hoses, core tool on the other side, with the micron gauge connected directly at the core tool itself. All right, so once we get to 300, then we We'll do the decay test. Now we're going to do the decay test. See our decay rate. Shows the rate at which it's rising, which is very low. Definitely within the acceptable range. So you can see that we just passed our decay test. Decay test is passed. What would you like to do? They're saying that we're well within acceptable range. I'm just going to continue it a little bit longer. But with only a minute in decay, it already proved that it was a tight system. It's pretty cool. Like, you see how fast that went? I mean, that's like 10 times faster than an average vacuum test. And we're holding under 500 microns, which is sweet. All right, so I want to show you this the Blue Vac app by MeasureQuick, which is what I used um, to sort of demonstrate the evacuation and the decay test. It's just a really convenient way of doing that, and it's a great application actually developed by my friend Jim Bergman. So right now I don't have a Blue Vac connected, but I'm going to show you the settings. So just real quickly, in the different screens, you saw this one, and then you also saw the graph screen, and you see these. there's a lines here, the red line and the green line. The red line is the maximum decay target, and 200 down there, the green line, is the evacuation target. But what I had it set on when I did this, particular test was an evacuation target of 300 and a decay target of a thousand which for a lot of manufacturers that's similar to what they suggest so carrier has a guideline like that which i think is uh, not to decay over a thousand after a 500 micron vacuum in 10 minutes uh, if i'm remembering correctly but a lot of manufacturers have that sort of a thousand micron decay limit and then also i had the time below decay target set to 10 minutes Jim Bergman suggests that you use 10 minutes as the baseline and then you add a minute for every ton. So based on Jim Bergman's suggestion, this would have a 13 minute time below decay. And then the question is, you know, where do we set the, the green evac and the 1000 decay? I set it there because that easily demonstrates how quickly it pulls down. But if you look at Jim's recommended settings, if you go to comfort cooling for new installations, he suggests you pull down to 200 with a decay of 500. If you go to comfort cooling for service, which is what we did, he recommends a evacuation of 500 and a decay of 1000. So actually we did better than the recommendations. It's just that the range was greater from 300 to 1000, which is why it passed the decay target test so quickly. Anyway, just, to, just demonstrating how this works. Uh, it's a really neat app. You can configure it for different applications. So for example, if you're working on ultra low temp refrigeration, it has a very, very low evacuation and decay target. If you're working on regular general refrigeration, the decay target's um, 500 and the evacuation target is 200. And it's doing the math on the decay rate to tell you as soon as you hit the point where the decay rate uh, proves that it's not going to go higher than that decay target, then it tells you that it's passed. So it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to go the entire 13 minutes. As soon as it calculates that you won't go over in the 13 minutes, it gives you that passing grade, which is why you saw that happen so quickly in the video. All in all, it's a great app for this, and you saw how quickly you can pull a great vacuum and do an effective decay test if you have the proper equipment. I mean, we did a vacuum faster than most people would do a typical vacuum, the old old timers rule of 30 minutes, and we proved that the system was in great condition and that it was not leaking and it was able to pull a very, very deep vacuum. So we know we boiled out that moisture. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on HVAC School.